Hi, welcome everybody. One line from the hymn Hark the Herald Angels Sing is as follows. Born to give us second birth. So what does this mean? What is the hymn talking about? Well, in John chapter 1 verse 12 it says, But to all who believe in him and accept him, he gave the right to become the children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. At Christmas, we celebrate the fact that Jesus was born into time and history, as is recorded in the Gospels, for example, in Matthew chapter 1 or Luke chapter 2. His birth means that now God is with us, which is one of his names, Emmanuel. His birth was foretold hundreds of years before it happened in Isaiah 7, 14, when Isaiah prophesied that the virgin would conceive a child and give birth to a son. His arrival was so significant that we organise our timeline and calendar around it, dividing history into BC and AD. Mm. So what does it mean to receive the second birth? A prominent Pharisee and religious teacher asked Jesus that exact question when he came to visit him at night for fear of being seen. Let's have a look at the scriptures. In John 3, it says, Rabbi Nicodemus said, We all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God has sent you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And so as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on the pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his own one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Romans 3, 22 and 23 says, We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true of everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned, and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. In Genesis, it explains about Adam and Eve falling when they sin by eating the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it appears that the serpent is, was telling the truth that because they didn't die as God had said they would. However, they did die because what died was not their physical body, but their spirit man. And they were separated from God at that moment. And so all of us since then need to be reconciled by God to God by being regenerated in our spirits, by being reborn. That's what Jesus came. And as he said, God loved the world so much. He loves you so much. He loves mm -hmm. us so much that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes, and that's the key word, believe, will have eternal life. And Jesus explained that little word, believe, in John 3.14, when he speaks about the people of Israel in the desert in the Old Testament when they had sinned against God and they cried out to God and God told Moses to make a snake and put it on a pole and they just had to look 
at that snake very simply had to look at that snake lifted up. Likewise, we need to look at Jesus crucified. Just like that. We don't need to add anything. We just need to look and believe that Jesus crucified for us, for our sins. He took away our sins so we might have life and be born again. That happened to me many years ago when I was a student. And one afternoon, I sat on the sofa reading the Word of God. I was hungry for the Word of God. I wanted to know. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit came upon me, and it was like fire going through me. It was like a movie passing by, a movie of my life passing by. It was like liquid love coming over me, and my life was changed 180 degrees. And I had a desire to follow him, to serve him. When I met my wife, Sarah, she had the same experience. And the last 27 years, we lived and worked in Mozambique, serving him, spreading the news of Jesus Christ, that he came to give us life. He has a plan and purpose for our lives. And that starts when you are born again. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today, for Christmas, for your Son, Jesus Christ, coming for us to give us life. I pray a blessing on each person watching this clip. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. <laughs>